back after a conference in mid-semester here on campus, and I expect a couple of you are breathing a sigh of relief getting past 502. So as sort of a midterm reflection, tonight I want to talk about your papers, about mass communication, and about ethics. Let's talk about the papers. Generally, I was very pleased with the first two, and the second one should be returned this weekend. I'll also get the grades posted. My wife's out of town on a business trip, so other than making sure my two teenage boys don't hurt each other, I should have time to catch up on some bookkeeping. As we look toward the rest of our reflection papers, I do want to set two challenges for you in these assignments. The first is the challenge of integration. I'd like to see you integrate the theories with the case studies and integrate faith throughout the paper where appropriate, rather than tacked on at the end. As far as theory and application are concerned, some of you have written about the theories and then about the case you're studying. I'd prefer you to write about the case and use the theory to explain it. As far as faith is concerned, if it is an issue, and it almost always is, also treat that as integral to the case rather than merely a brief religious commentary at the end. The second challenge involves thesis. Try to avoid simply saying what you're going to talk about. I'm going to use theory WX and Y to discuss Z. Instead, explain the insight that ties everything together. In one paper about the movie Toy Story, someone wrote, Interpersonal theory explains how Buzz and Woody move from arch rivals to action duo. This sort of focus also has to do with content. A paper on Spanglish focused on a single scene. This sort of specificity in thesis and focus forces you to be more concrete in your examples and arguments. By the way, I'm not a suggesting a preference for movies here. We had great papers on situations at works, church, and home. But using an integrated thesis to focus on a narrow aspect of the situation will help you. Let's try it. I also want to encourage you to read the unit discussions and introductions particularly. The discussion about postmodernism at the beginning of the section on critical theories is also a useful introduction to your book reviews on the same topic. Notice, too, how the two introductions to the two parts kinds of theories in MassCon uh, are separated according to the scientific and interpretive paradigm. The scientific approach, of course, gets to everyone's hot button about things like the cause and effect of violence in the media and Early theories, based on studies of propaganda in the World Wars, argued for a powerful effect, but later thinking suggested the effect was more limited because of selective attention and exposure. But uh, Tendulum is drifting back toward a view that gives the media more credit, even though we have more choices to select from. The two-step flow model described in the introduction to the section on media effects is also interesting. It argued that the media doesn't affect all of us, but it does affect the people who affect us. Incidentally, while Griffin took out McLuhan, which I personally regret, he also put Noel Newman's Spiral of Silence back in after leaving her out of the last two editions. I think it was a good decision. Her theory offers an explanation of why we often don't speak out when we should. Finally, I want to draw your attention to the ethical reflection at the end of our readings in Griffin on group and public communication, especially the work of Aristotle, Burke, and Fisher. In this short section, Griffin describes Aristotle's golden mean and its consequences. Straight talk, gentle assertiveness, appropriate adaptation. It sounds a little like Delia's constructivism or rhetorical design logic. Well, I like Aristotle and want you to think about what he says and how it affects our ethical choices, but I'm more interested in making sure you considered Colonel West's prophetic pragmatism. And of course, I want you to make, sh to make sure you look at the great cartoon about the Good Samaritan giving the prodigal son a ride in his convertible. Seriously, West is important and often overlooked. Somewhere between biblical narratives and a Marxist critique of capitalism, West argues for modes of action that overcome obstacles, particularly the obstacle of institutional oppression. My question is, does this sort of pragmatism result in an argument that the ends justify the means? Can it only be marshaled in defense of a particular political viewpoint, the one West subscribes to? I think West provides a lot of things for us to think about even though we probably won't be voting for the same candidates in the election next Tuesday. That means West and me. For one thing, I think he rises above the cynicism characteristic of so much politics today. West's thoughts about the music and rhythm of the blues remind me of Tolkien's observation that the body of a Christian's work should reflect the ideal of hope. That is to say, although some of his or her stories may be dark, the overall impact of one's life work will reflect the confidence that good eventually triumphs. Tolkien calls this eucatastrophe. The Eucharist, the celebration of Christ's sacrifice, leads us to hope. In the end, the good guys win. So I'll close with West's notion of tragicomic hope. Of the blues, he says it's a way of facing darkness and still smiling, of looking unflinchingly at despair and still enduring. 
It's a human response to adverse circumstances that accents humanity, creativity, a sense of levity, but it understands the gravity of what we're up against. There's no optimism in the blues, nor is there pessimism in the blues. It's a mature hope, an earned hope, a blood-soaked, tear-stained.